Hey, deserving listeners, love is blind. Let's see what happens. So you good? I'm good. I'm good. I I think uh, it's a lot of emotions going on. Yeah, just breathe. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're good. Because it's like... Yeah, uh, Yeah, but but you know what, though? Hopefully, Clay just goes to AD and holds her if she would have him and says, I'm sorry. Because, you know, your life's passing before your eyes at the altar. Most people don't even remember what happened at the altar at their wedding. Let, you know, they don't remember anything that happens at the reception because you know, it's just like whirlwind. So now that things are starting to calm down a little bit, maybe a more intense apology or tomorrow or the next day or so, I don't know. I, I would just hope that there's more sorrow, more apology, more remorse, more care. AD deserves that. And Clay might grow from that. He might get in touch with that side of himself, see how someone else deals with pain, and feel that he's worth someone's love, even though it's not in the right situation. You know, I think he might benefit from that too, because I, I think he might have similar questions about his worth. Me and AD have a great relationship, but it wasn't enough where I felt as though that this is the person I'm about to marry. Should I go talk to her? Uh-huh. Um, yeah, you can. You know what I mean? You, you definitely don't want to appear to be indifferent. Marriage is a unit. Yeah, good. It, it, it's almost like Clay is just dying for a mentor and a male role model. That, that, the way he asked that question, you know, sh- should I go talk to her? I, mean, I don't know if I'm just reading into it. And then, you know, the dad says, well, yeah, you it might be a good idea. You don't want to come across as indifferent, meaning you want to hopefully come across as your true self that you care. Not everyone in Clay's shoes that we have seen will have that impulse. Um, should I go talk to her? Should I show you know that I care? So I'm guessing some of you think I'm biased for him, and maybe I am. Maybe there's something kind of familiar about Clay to me. I've had family members and friends like him. Maybe it's his his underfunctioning and the style of his desire for mentorship that sucks me in um, for better or for worse, if I think about it. Uh, I, yeah, I think that is true either way. Um, I don't know. I Like... With Tom Sandoval or Jeremy on this season, I have a, a similar feeling about in that I care and would love to help. But there's some people on the show where I really want to help. Like, I remember feeling this way kind of about, about JP, particularly when Taylor broke up with him and he finally started talking like a human being after Taylor broke up with him. <laughs> They're interviewing JP and he's just like, yeah, maybe I messed things up. And, you know, I just feel like, hey, um, you can, I believe in you, you know, just try. Whereas like, I don't know, like someone like Uche with his behavior, I, I, I don't really get sucked in. So maybe I'm just seeing it. I don't know. All I can do is say that that's how I'm seeing it. And I, I just feel like for Clay, there's a very good person in there that I believe in. If he just had a, a mentor, you could even think of it subconsciously, I guess, in, in, in the psychoanalytic sense or the psychodynamic sense that he is sending all these signals out like the way a child would that he wants somewhat, someone to guide him and mentor him and be there for him and parent him and be a safe, all-knowing presence to follow. And he did that when he was a kid, and there wasn't enough of that, maybe particularly from men. And so he is almost sabotaging himself, hoping that someone will come along and fix him, because <laughs> then finally he'll he'll get that fulfillment of that sort of care, that sort of holding. Until he can be fulfilled in that way, he can't really stand on his own two feet and know who he is and know what he wants. It's kind of interesting to think about, right? Someone? Yeah? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, AD. It was a game time decision. Like, I thought about everything, AD. Like, 
I really was fucked and struggling with everything this whole this whole time. It's not. Yeah, we'll hear what AD says, and I always am saying this is something you want to tell someone. I was struggling. I a big part of me wanted to be with you. Um, it wasn't all fake. I wasn't a no from the beginning, you know. And maybe he was, but it could help if this is true, particularly if, if you know he says this, so that she doesn't walk away thinking, oh my God, he never loved me. You know, it, it just helps to have that at least countered. But what is she gonna say here? No world that exists where I don't understand that, Clay. But I'm saying, but like, it's irresponsible of me to say yes in this time when I'm not- Okay, <laughs> like with Jimmy and Chelsea, the breaker upper will often want some understanding or they want the person that they're breaking up with to say, oh, okay, you know what? Now that I see things from your point of view, I understand why you broke, you made the right choice. No, <laughs> maybe you'll get that, but no, uh, it, it's too soon. It's asking too much. Uh, you just have to be comfortable with the discomfort of ha of hurting someone's feelings deeply. You just it's just going to happen, and you just have to take a deep breath and say, "I am disappointing someone. I am hurting someone's feelings." Even though I didn't do anything morally wrong, I didn't deceive, I didn't trick, I didn't manipulate. I fell in love, and at at towards the end of this process, I had concluded I wasn't a, enough in love with this person to marry them for their sake, but also for mine. All's fair in love and war. You've heard that phrase before, right? Well, there's a reason for that. Th that's not a phrase to justify war. That's a phrase to emphasize just how in love there can be things that are very hurtful, but are fair. People fall out of love, and that doesn't make that person who fell out of love a bad person. If you cheat or harm, that does make you a bad person. But trying it out and hoping it will happen and concluding it's not happening and saying no at the altar, I mean, you could argue he should just not even go to the altar. I've been over that. But anyway, and you just have to be able to live with that yourself. And you cannot expect AD to understand or go along with or even want to entertain that idea it she's hurt and well but we're here i hope that she expresses why she thinks that she was being essentially tricked uh, maybe there's something there to that let's watch but i'm saying but like it's irresponsible of me to say yes in this time when i'm not ready to give you 100 percent, and you wouldn't want that you wouldn't want me saying yes and being half-assed with marriage you wouldn't want that and I've said, I'm not ready for that. And like, I'm, I'm feeling bad because I see you crying, it's hurting me. It was a game. It's good. As usual, I wish he would just stop and ask her how she feels. <laughs> um, I do notice a fair amount of that style in both families of yammering. I mean, I should talk because I yammer all the time in these videos. I, I would like to think I don't when I'm a therapist or, or even a friend or a husband, but his family tends to yammer at him, her family tends to yammer at her, and then he tends to yammer at her. I wish that someone would just stop and say, I I'm sorry, how you feeling? You know, just, or when the family was with AD, just, how you feeling? Or the father with Clay, seemed like a pretty good dynamic, but and a lot of yammering. Maybe that's what they want. Maybe that's what they benefit from. But I was just waiting for someone to stop and with Clay just say, how you feeling? What's going on? A good sign, take it from me as a therapist, is when someone is suffering and you want to help, a good sign is you shutting up. <laughs> Even if there's no talking from the person that's suffering. Um, at the very least... Sitting in silence is better than you yammering. And better yet, the person suffering is the one yammering, you know? But if you're the one yammering, <laughs> then 
I don't, you know, sometimes there's no rules to this. Sometimes that's exactly what someone wants. But I just wish for once someone to ask AD, how are you feeling? What do you want? What do you need? How can I help? And it's just for me to say off a of great two weeks, this is what, this is going to be my wife forever. I could not make that decision to you today. And it just breaks my heart seeing you like this because I love you. I really do. It's like me saying no was not to you, AD. Like, I'm not ready. And that's hard for me to look at myself in the mirror. And say, okay. Makes me want to cry. That sounds convincing. I mean, I don't, maybe it's authentic. Maybe it's not. But that's helpful. Again, with Clay, because so often in, in these scenes, I'm wanting the person in Clay's shoes to say stuff like this from the heart, eye contact. You know, it, it feels it, it feels authentic, you know? That's exactly the kind of stuff that I role play. I'm not saying no to you. I'm saying no to Mary. He didn't say that, but that's the implication, right? And I have a hard time f looking into the mirror. I, I, it, there's something wrong with me. And uh, um, what else, what do you say? And it just breaks my heart seeing you like this. Right, it breaks my heart seeing you like this, you know? I care. Yeah, again, wish you would just stop. How are you doing? How are you feeling? Do you hate me? You're free to hate me, you can hate me. And that's hard for me to look at myself in the mirror and say that shit. You are a perfect girl. I've grown with you. Like, it's hard for me to look at myself in the mirror like I can't be right now, I'm not a husband right now. I'm not, I'm not rejecting you. And it almost feels like that I am, you know? I mean, he is, and I, think there is a part of him basically that he's communicated that well he hasn't said this directly but I think it just you know it just might not be a good match I, I don't think it has to do with her looks or anything it just also has to do with the way that the relationship feels for him and regardless of where that comes from anyway I'm just reminded of the way Jimmy broke up with Chelsea and how he'd get defensive and how he would you know point out I'm breaking up with you because of this and we're not getting that from Clay. I with Jimmy I thought it would be okay for him to generally say that last fight really hurt my feelings and I I just couldn't recover from that. I, I, I just really damaged my optimism, motivation and love for you. That that fight was hard for me. You could say something like that and then just don't go into details, don't tit for tat, don't get defensive, don't, you know, point out, and then you did this, and then you did that. Um, Clay's not doing anything like that. He, he's um, he, he's trying real hard to make her feel better, and I, I think he's giving it a good shot. I think there's a good sh chance it's working. Also, I wish somebody would ask her, <laughs> how, how, where are you? Because I'm curious where she is. It does. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Can I get a hug? Sure. I'm sorry. Dude. Yeah, it just breaks your heart. You know, and think about Paul and Micah. Paul was also kind of going after Micah. Like, I don't think you would have been a good mother. <laughs> Remember that? We've seen a lot of breakups. We've seen a lot of people dump people and I can't, I can't really find anything in this other than not stopping and asking how she feels. Um, I can't, I, I don't see much to criticize. You just wonder if, given this, is this just a salesman being a salesman, or is this his true self? You know, there's a lot that he could have done in this moment to just walk off and maybe revealing that he doesn't have the empathy that he seemingly shows. And, you know, it's interesting because, right, yeah, again, maybe a lot of people think that I'm I'm biased or I, I'm tricked or something, but from the very beginning with Clay, when he was even asking her about what she looked like, you know, looked like, you know, lips and butts and all that kind of stuff, and when he's talking about going to the gym, it's like, what <laughs> is happening? But then we would see this other side and he would kind of respond well 
in the moment. So he's just like this huge contrast with himself. And I did put out there, I think, that it could be that he just isn't used to this kind of relationship or this space of really considering other people's feelings and and, and thinking about him. So, so, well, here's the thing. So for people that are under functioners, not always, but they can be more on the childish side because that's how they were treated growing up. And they've never fully graduated into all the mindsets required of being an adult. And one of those mindsets is that you just have a felt sense that you're responsible for your impact on other people. Like for children, like let's say you're having a stressful day as a parent and your kid won't do their homework. You're answering emails at work. Um, maybe you're going through a divorce or so, I don't know. There's a lot of stress in your life. Um, you might even be having a serious medical issue and you calmly ask your kid, hey, I, I, I'm, I'm going through a tough night, so you could really help me out if you just did your homework without any fuss tonight. It, 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 could, could you do that favor for me? And you really need your kid to do their homework because if they don't, they could fail the class and then they have to take night school or summer school or they'll fail and you don't want that to happen for them, but you also don't want to have to deal with having to drive them to school in the summer, blah, blah, blah. And um, you ask them nicely. You're not dumping on them, but you're asking them nicely. And then we would not expect the child, particularly younger children, to say, oh, well, I, I really don't want my mom to go through it. I know they're already dealing with a lot. I don't want to add to that, so I'm going to do my homework. I'm going to really make sure, no matter what the distractions, I'll stick to it. Um, certainly there are some kids that are like that, but... Generally speaking, we don't expect kids to be that way. We don't want to expect kids that way. You don't want your your kids to be that aware, depending on the age, but you don't want them to be of that mindset that they are your keeper, that they are responsible for your mood or saving you or something, you know, within reason. So we understand that, right? And when you get older, you slowly start to, as a system and your parents and in life as a individual growing up, but also the system will treat you as such that you'll slowly start to realize that you are responsible and you want to be responsible. You want the pros and cons of responsibility. You want to live your own life. You also are willing to take on the responsibility of being held accountable for your actions. You know, say that kid is seven years old and refuses to do you know, their homework. We wouldn't want the parent to come down on that kid like a ton of bricks and say, I can't believe I asked you nicely. You're ruining my life. I'm having a tough day. You wouldn't want to do that because it's a seven-year-old child. <laughs> they don't understand. You don't want them to think that way. You want them to not harm other people directly. Like you don't want them to push sister down the stairs, but you also don't want them to feel like they're responsible for your feelings overall. There's nuance to this, of course, but if You've always been treated as an underfunctioner. The system treats you that way, and you've sort of developed that mindset. You could be a 30-year-old adult and still not really feel responsible for other people's feelings the way a child. Maybe you know, maybe Clay isn't like a seven-year-old, but maybe he's like a 13-year-old in that sense, right? And I wondered if he has empathy but he doesn't feel responsible for someone else's feelings. He doesn't feel that that tug, right? That like, oh my God, I, I have someone's heart in my hands. <laughs> or, oh my God, if I go on this show and someone falls in love with me, what happens if I don't fall in love with them back? Like, I don't even have someone's heart in my hands. I'm just reacting to the possibility of a heart being in my hands. That's a huge responsibility. We don't want kids thinking that way, and some underfunctioners can still be that way. And they'll come across like they lack empathy. You wouldn't say that that seven-year-old child lacks empathy. You would say developmentally they are um, expanding their empathy. They have empathy, but they're applying it 
to more and more situations as they get older. I wonder if he's like that, where he's at such a, a basic level of discovery, given what he went through and given the kind of holding pattern that he might have entered when he was a teenager, which is also interesting, as he said, he used to be a nerd and Maybe I kind of forgot about that whole storyline that he had adopted this kind of persona of the player and the the suave guy as a way of staving off that nerd and and that you know because it's one thing to have trouble at home and then also to have trouble at school. It's like okay, I finally have this thing that I am and people respect me or think I'm cool or something. There's some self esteem there. Um, so he enters in this holding pattern and then. He knows something's wrong, and as he's going on the show, he's like, I need to, there's something wrong here. I need to further this. And this interaction here is another step forward of I am responsible, and I want that responsibility. It comes with it some weight and heaviness, which isn't great, but... If I'm going to have love, if I'm going to get my needs met, if I'm going to feel like a stand-up man, an adult, then which I want and that that feels good, I'm going to have to accept this responsibility and, and I'm I'm facing it. You know, I'm I'm not running away from it. I'm acting from that responsibility. I'm taking care of her. You know, it's a good thing. I love you too. Well, now I'm wondering, maybe they do date afterwards. Because <laughs> now the caution here is if Clay doesn't want to date her beyond this, which I think he does, but if he doesn't, don't lead her on. Like, that's, that's, the, that's the thing you have to consider when you're doing this kind of ethical breaking up is firm boundaries. Because if you you know, warm up enough the breakup process, the person being dumped will go, oh, so it's back on? <laughs> There's a chance and we're basically still together. And then you end up breaking up with them again. So, you know, I don't, I don't know what's happening here. What am I supposed to do now? What do you mean what am I supposed to do now? What am I supposed to do? You think I'm leaving? What are you supposed to do? I guess you gotta run away from me. Oh my God, it's gonna be so sad, it's breaking my heart. That was just a fucking lot. It was a lot. There's something about her her tone of voice. At the altar, she was like that too. It's just maybe the way she talks, but there's something about it that I think is a mode that she goes into where it's regressive, regressing, which is okay, but it gives a vibe of a helpless little child in a way which isn't pathological, but I have been seeing that. I, I I don't know if it's the same mode, but it was a. I was getting a similar vibe when she was with Matthew in the pods. She just seems like a deer in headlights, a helpless deer in headlights. And Matthew seemingly was using that, you know, and when he engaged, you know, I know what you want. You, you want to be with me and, you know, all that kind of language. Like, but she's doing that again, and you know, could be temporary. Yeah, it does look like that's what he's wanting. He's not being very concrete. I wish he would just be con. I wish he'd be clear. Ad, will you continue dating me? Just something like that. Because I don't know if that's what he wants. But that's a lot of signaling that's happening. And Ad can certainly say no, or I need time to think. I'm telling you, like, I'm going to put the work in. I'm going to go to therapy, all that stuff, like, all that stuff I said, you know? Part of what he is. Okay. So I guess on my timeline next week during the reunion, we'll find out at least a one year later update. All right. Well, that does it for that episode. Everyone out there, please take care of yourself because you deserve it. You really, really do. <laughs>